the horrific murder of 14-year-old Emmett had the same effect. The bravery of Mamie Till, Emmett's mother, to keep her child's casket open for public display awakened the world to the ugliness of racism and sparked the civil rights movement. Decades have come and gone, and yet the racism and the lack of accountability remain. But we are still here, not just existing, but standing strong and resolute in the pursuit of justice and equity. While there is much work to be done, we can't forget to make time for joy. So today, on what would have been my cousin Emmett's 79th birthday, we're here to celebrate his life. Over the next hour and a half, we'll see some beautiful live musical performances, hear some moving tributes to Cousin Emmett's life and legacy, and honor the many other people lost to racial violence. To get the program going, I'd like to welcome Deborah Watts, co-founder of the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation and another of Emmett's cousins. Now, if she's ready, she will begin, but if not, I will move forward. When you are part of Emmett, Emmett Till's lineage, you come into this world with a sense of duty to carry on his name and legacy. But having you all here for this event is a reminder that his legacy is yours too. And that we are all connected by a desire to keep the legacy alive by confronting the mental, physical, and emotional violence of racism. Throughout our whole lives, in every system and institution, Racism surrounds us as Black people. It's in our school system, in the whitewashing of curriculum, and the disproportionate punishment of our children. It's in our workplaces, where we have to shrink ourselves to fit white standards and work twice as hard for less pay and fewer promotions. It's in our healthcare system, where our pain is dismissed and our mothers and babies don't survive labor and it's in our criminal justice system where judges hand us harsher sentences and police appoint themselves as judge, jury, and executioner. This hatred and this violence are not new. In fact, they are the foundational part of America's history and culture. The theft of native land and genocide of indigenous people are proof of that. A century of slavery is proof of that. And the murder of Emmett Till is proof of that. These events were not blips or hiccups. They were part of the pattern of racist violence that continues today. So as much as I want today to be one of celebration, I also want it to be one of collective healing, resistance, and action. Through uplifting Emmett on his birthday, we honor the past and breathe hope into our longstanding vision for a more just and equitable future for Black America. And now we're going to hear from Gary Hines. Gary, if you please unmute. How are you doing, my sister? Excellent. Thank you so much. We can hear you. Oh, my sister. Can you hear me? Yes. There was a little bit of a technical difficulty, but we can hear you now. All right. So honored to be a part of this program. How are you doing today? I believe Gary is having uh, some technical difficulties. And so if we can move forward with our next. Is that you, Gary? Are you clear? 
Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, we are having a bit of connection difficulties. You are frozen. Okay. Let me see. Um, Gary? Yes, am I, am I on All right. Yet? We can hear you. Let's try now. Okay. And how are you doing, my sister? You're blessed. Yes, through it all. Thank you so much for having me as a part of this amazing program uh, as we honor and acknowledge um, the 79th birthday of Brother Emmett Till and all that he represents. Uh, we honor his memory, uh, his, his legacy, and all those that came before him and after him. As we know, he was a part of a system that really is the most brutal in the history of humanity. The transatlantic slave trade was rooted in white supremacy, rooted in racism, and maintained by brutality and murder, um, sexual abuse, um, economic and political denial. All of those things culminated in the lynching centuries later of Emmett Till, and then years later in the lynching of George Floyd. So we're here now to finally and fully say enough is enough and to eradicate that. All right, I think we're going to move on. I, Gary, we lost you somehow. Um, so, Amberly, if we can move on to our next presenter. Yes. Next up, we'll hear a musical selection from composer and bassist Greg Austin. August, I'm sorry, Greg August. Welcome, Greg. Emmett was born the 25th of July, 1941. He was a breech baby, and they had to get him turned around. It looked like he said, free at last, I'm here, I'm free. the happiest baby in the world. Nothing fazed him. If you gave him that bottle, made sure he was dry, you could put him in his bed and he would lie there and kick and poo and for hours. It was more like we were sisters and brothers almost. My mother raised him while I went to work. It was like he was hers and I knew I was hers. We had fun together. We laughed together. I got up that morning we were supposed to meet Moses down at 12th Street Station. We could hear the 
whistle blowing as we got to the steps. He tore up the steps. I said, wait a minute, you didn't kiss me goodbye. Where are you going? How do I know I'll ever see you again? And he said, oh, mama, he really scolded me. I wondered why I said a dumb thing like that. But he turned around, came back, he gave me the kiss. I said, what about your ring? I'd given him his daddy's ring, first time. He said, well, I'm going to show this off to the fellows. It was Willie May telling me that those men had come and taken Bo away from my uncle's house. said, turn me loose. I've got a job to do. Oh, yes, we're going to open the casket. Let the people see what I've seen. I want the world to see this. When people saw what had happened to this little 14-year-old boy, they knew then that not only were black men in danger, but black children as well. I do know that without the shedding of blood, there's no redemption. And I do know that the Lord appeared to me in a vision, and he told me that Emmett was not mine, that he belonged to him, and that God had chosen him for this particular mission. That was that was wonderful. Thank you so much for being here today. Now joining us all the way from London, singer, songwriter, Alani is here to perform a musical adaption of Claudia Jones' 1955 poem, Lament of Emmett Till. The floor is yours. <clears throat> mother, mother, you who bore a son of sorrow, no. White wash justice show sure will reap more than it can ever sow. Cry, cry, rage. Murder, murder, see the land in more than angry bands. Uncle, uncle, he who stood facing Linger's eyes. Earth and hand and Jim Rose dug of meeting raiding child. Cry, cry, Lynch, raise your fist. Murder, murder, see the land in more than angry past. Tears, blood, and pain, 
all mixed in rage, sorrow comes again and again when I am dead at heaven's gates. Will I be free? Oh, people, people, you who swore vengeance for this brutal hour, may your unity so all the strife to avenge this young man's life. Murder, murder, seal the land in more than angry. brought that poem to life with your beautiful voice. That was amazing, Alani. Thank you so very much. Coming to the stage now is a special guest who came out of retirement just for this, lyricist Carlos Johnson. Young when I saw that Jet magazine Story about what they did to Emmett at 14 Lined in the kidnap and murder of black team Back when we just wanted the right to be a human beings To the status to treat us like livestock It's a, it's a nigga about to hang, it's just a slang nah. Poison they thing, legislation they thing nah. Start attack on our education and work out Got them around all the obstacles and roadblocks So wondering what's next, cause it don't stop Still got the noose around the neck of our culture Another one of us got shot, they wasn't supposed to. Not shot to hear, just shocked on how we show composure and how it ain't sparked the revolution with our soldiers. I'll never know, but something's gotta give. Gotta be a way to stop them from murdering us out here. Cause we been asking for justice, but we get nothing. And even if we did, it wouldn't justify. It was all over a lie. So we just gonna lie down and take it, that's a lie. If no one has to battle, it's obvious there's a fire. And by my estimation, we've yet to throw a strike. So a story still repeats from Emmett to Tamir Rock. It's time to raise the price on taking black innocent law. Let's see what happens if we militarize, totally turn the ties, open the eyes to anyone asleep overnight. And if anyone survives, cause we civilized otherwise, making all the mother rise seem like child play. They killing us anyway. Cause they call it the end of the community where we're supposed to be. Hola, cabros del Facebook. Hola, ¿te gustaría ser mi Ani-chan? Soy un neko kawaii, Ani koi, quiero jugar contigo, Ani-chan, quiero conseguir mi Ani-chan, por favor. Sallemos nuestra técnica de los hermanos Me gustaría mucho tener una Ani-chan para jugar. Abrete puerta de mierda, te digo que te abras, no te lo repetiré dos veces, por la concha su madre, cuando yo digo algo se cumple, y yo digo, abrete ese sesamo y así será la... Mierda, ya es un brazo de mierda de mierda. Escúchame bien, que arrancaré por aquí, mierda, que me gustó las pelotas. Oh, maldita. Ah, maldita. Mamá, 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 mamá
wow. Hold tight, everyone. I think we've been Zoom bombed. So if you just give us a minute to take control uh, of our performance performances once again, we will get started in just a moment. Okay. Amberly, do you want to go back to Gary Hines while we are working to get unhacked? Absolutely. Absolutely. Our performer that we want to bring up next is Gary Hines, composer and director of the Grammy Award-winning Sound of Blackness Ensemble. Gary Hines, you have the floor. Gary, you have to unmute. You on mute, Gary. Gary, you're still on mute. We can't hear you. You're on mute. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, on behalf of Sounds of Blackness, singers and band, we are honored to be a part of this momentous occasion, uh, celebrating uh, and commemorating our dear brother, uh, iconic Emmett Till, 79th birthday uh, and all that it represents. You know, the late great Fannie Lou Hamer said that she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that was uh, 1964 at the Democratic National Convention when she boldly formed the Democratic Freedom Party uh, and broke up but still maintained uh, activity with the convention. She was sick and tired of injustice, of inequality, of brutality, of lynchings and beatings. And of course, that comes right back to Emmett Till and fast forwards to George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many more. So Sounds of Blackness, a few years ago with the emergence of the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, we wrote and recorded an anthem called Black Lives Matter. And uh, now we've been blessed to do the same for today's movement, uh, but we channeled the words of the late great Fannie Lou Hamer and that's the reason and the purpose uh, of our new record, Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired, the words of Fannie Lou Hamer, the spirit of Fannie Lou Hamer, but applied today for Ahmaud Arbery and, and, and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and so many more. And the fact that this represents, they represent four centuries of lynchings and brutality and, and castrations and burnings and mutilations uh, as Brother Till had to endure. So this song, uh, it's not a happy song, uh, but it's, uh, it's expressing the righteous indignation and the outrage and anger that's in the streets here in Minneapolis. Uh, and we promised people that we would not come out with a happy song about this. Uh, we've gotten many offers to do uh, hold hands, peace and love, kumbaya type songs, and we've turned them all down because that's not the mood of the times. Uh, right now, we don't need an anesthetic, a narcotic, a, tranquil a tranquilizer, or a sedative. We need music. Uh, Paul Robeson once said that all true artists have a responsibility to their people. And so our responsibility as Sounds of Blackness is to be the musical voice of the people. And that musical voice right now is a voice of rage and outrage and indignation and a call to action. And that's why we wrote and recorded Sick and Tired of Being...
Amberly? Are we, Gary, are you? Gary, are you? Okay. Okay, and I, I don't know if you heard any of that. I was uh, speaking for a minute or two. No, we heard you. We heard it all. It okay. was powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Next, You're welcome. We will now hear from the singer and actor, D. Kevin Williams. Kevin, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, one moment, moment, folks, we're um, awaiting Kevin to unmute himself. All right. Um, I do not see uh, Kevin at the moment, so we can proceed to the, okay. to the next presenter. All right, next up, we have a special piece by three young string performers, Abigail Dickinson, a violinist in her third year of college at the Junior Boyer College of Music and Temple University, Zora Evang Evang Evangeline, I'm sorry, Zora Evangeline, award-winning principal harpist for the Youth Orchestra of San Antonio and high school senior. And Samuel uh, Igbu, 14-year-old violinist, member of the Youth Orchestra of San Antonio and student of San Antonio Symphony uh, concert master Eric Gratz. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you. 
What a joy to have next generation here with us to celebrate and honor a man and a legacy so many years older than them. Samuel, Zora, Abigail, you all have such bright futures. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you all of the amazing artists that we've heard and the musicians that we've heard that gave us their time and their talents today in honor of Emmett. Music and art can be such a healing force. And I feel really good after hearing that. I hope all of you out here are feeling good too. Before we move on, I want to note that you can donate to the Emmett Till Family Foundation by visiting the link in the chat. We thank you in advance. What's next is going to fill your spirits even more as four storytellers walk us through the life and the legacy of Emmett, starting from the very beginning. Here to share an account of Emmett's childhood is our cousin and oldest living relative, Ms. Thelma Wright Edwards. Thank you for being here, Cousin Thelma. The floor is yours. Ms. Thelma, please unmute your phone. Thank you for inviting me. They ready for you? Oh. They asked me to unmute. You're unmuted. You can go now, ma'am. Ms. Edwards, please mute, unmute your phone. You're on mute. There you are. Thank you for inviting me. I'll never forget the night that Emmett was born. Mamie was in the hospital. My aunt and I were at my first piano recital at the Antioch Baptist Church. And after I played, Auntie said, you know what? I'm going to go out and call Cook County Hospital and see what Mamie had. Because, you know, at that time, we didn't have ultrasound. Aunt Alma came back later and told me with a wide grin on her face, Mamie had a little boy. And you know, I was, I was kind of disappointed because I was looking for a little girl, baby, a doll. But through the years, I grew to love Emmett as I would a doll, if you might explain that. As a baby, I remember Emmett loved bananas, Gerbers, and I just couldn't figure out why, but he loved cooking also. In 1953, they moved back to Chicago from the little town that we grew up in. And I was staying with them again. And Emmett said he didn't feel well. He stayed home and he made a lazy daisy cake. And it was delicious. But Mamie told him, if you can make, if you feel well enough to make a cake, then you have to go to school tomorrow. Emmett was a peacemaker. If anyone in the family had a gripe or a beef, he was there to show compassion and to figure things out. I think any other boy or girl at his age would be out roller skating, but he wasn't like that. Emmett was a stutterer. And when my aunt would send him places, say, go down to Sister Sally's and ask her to send me a cup of sugar. And he would say, Mamu, he didn't say grandma, Mamu. He said, please send somebody else because I can't talk good. And that's one reason that my heart is so pain, because if he felt 
like that toward a black lady, how would he feel toward Miss Bryant Donham? Well, let me continue. They moved to Chicago in 1953. And my father came up from Mississippi to bury my sister-in-law's father-in-law. And of course, on the way back, Emmett chose to go home with him for vacation. And my aunt said, oh no, Emmett wanted a motorcycle. My aunt said, oh no, instead of getting a motorcycle, I want you to go to your Uncle Moses' house on a vacation. And this is very important. Emmett and I rode back and forth to, from Chicago to Argo, the little town where we grew up. And my minister's son said, do you know the little boy that you talk to all the time? I said, oh yes, that's my cousin. And he said, you know, he accepted Christ the other night. He was just ready and waiting. And my heart was very happy. So during the funeral, I told my aunt, and this was listed in the eulogy. Now, when I was coming along, they said that Rosa Parks did not get up because her feet were hurting. But Rosa told us that she was thinking about Emmett and that's why she didn't get up. You know that Emmett was a catalyst to the civil rights movement. And I feel that God was in the plan. God, he was a sacrificial lamb. He took Emmett, but it hasn't been in vain. My heart is still painful but it's empty of any type of hatred. I really thank you for being on here today. Thank you to everyone. There's few people still living that knew Emmett firsthand. So it's such a blessing to have you here, Cousin Thelma, and to share your perspective and your memories of him uh, that most of us don't have. So thank you, Cousin Thelma. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Amberly, we now have Kevin on, and of course we have Leslie as well. Okay, okay. I was just listening to Kevin. Uh, intro, sorry, and I can't find it. So we're just, Kevin, if you're on, we welcome you to the stage. Kevin, please unmute yourself to begin. Okay, maybe we'll circle back to Kevin once he gets his, um, oh, one second, I see him here. There we are. I was attempting to unmute. However, hello everyone, God bless, good God morning. Um, just to preclude, I wanted to thank the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation, as well as um, Brother Michael, H. Michael Driver, who uh, is my mentor and my friend, who has put the piece that I am about to do together, known as the Requiem, the Life and Death of Emmett Till. Uh, and I will be 
providing uh, just a piece called In the Lord. Are we ready? Yes. Excellent. Go something like this. Emmett was 14 years old and stocky, weighing about 150 pounds and standing nearly five feet. It was the summer of 1955 when we visited Mamie in Chicago. Emmett, curious boy, always wanted me to tell him stories about the Delta, the Mississippi Delta. I lived in Money on the other side of North Glenwood with his cousins Wheeler and Curtis. We, we have a church there too. Now, his cousins was just about Emmett's age and they were excited at the thought of Emmett visiting Money for the rest of the summer. While in Chicago, we just found out that Lamar Smith was gunned down in front of the Brookhaven Courthouse for organizing a black protest rally. Three white people were arrested, but soon released. This made Mamie very nervous about all the talk of Emmett going to me with the, going with me to the South. She was planning on a family vacation to Nebraska to see relatives in Omaha, but Emmett didn't want to go. He had his mind set on the Mississippi Delta. So before we departed, Mamie repeatedly reminded and quizzed Emmett that money Mississippi was no Chicago, and he was going to have to act like these two, two places were different worlds, and he was going to have needed to know how to act in front of white folks at all times. Emmett was always shaking his head yes. Another thing, he couldn't say some words without stuttering, so Mamie, on some words, taught Emmett to whistle before he speaks to cut down on the stuttering. Bad idea for the Delta. Well... When they came to get my Emmett, I tried to tell them it was all a big mistake and that they didn't know no better. I begged Mr. Roy and Milan to let Emmett go, but they didn't hear nothing about no preacher man. My soul been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. My soul been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, my soul been anchored in the Lord, before I be in hell one day, my soul been anchored in the Lord, I'd sing and pray myself away. My soul been anchored in the Lord. Gone preach and teach, tend to never stop. My soul been anchored in the Lord until I reach that mountain top. My soul been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord. In the Lord, my soul been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, my soul been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord, my soul been anchored in the Lord. Wow, that's so powerful. Thank Bless you, Kevin. Me. Oh, my goodness, that was so powerful. Over the years, Emmett's story has been told by authors, historians, and documentarians. And one of them is here with us today. Keith Bouchard is an award-winning filmmaker and activist who directed The Untold Story of Emmett Till. One of my good friends, let's bring it, bring it to the stage, Keith. Hello, everyone. Before I give my presentation, I believe we have Leslie from the NAACP on the line, and she would like to say a few words. Mm 
And Leslie, if you'll please unmute your phone. Well, shall I proceed? Yeah. And grace and peace, can you all hear me? Yes, Grace yes. and peace, everyone. Again, my name is Leslie E. Redmond, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the president for the Minneapolis NAACP, also known as the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the oldest civil rights organization in the nation. As we know, not only are we in the midst of a global health pandemic, police brutality is running rapid, and it is coming to the surface. Here in Minneapolis, I've been on the front the murder of brother George Floyd. And I've also stood in solidarity when Ahmaud Aubrey was murdered and also Breonna Taylor. I was a part of the Louisiana 87 when we got arrested for protesting Attorney General Daniel Cameron for not arresting and charging the murderers of Breonna Taylor. When I think about what's going on today, we cannot forget about brother Emmett Till and his murder. When we think about the NAACP, Elder Thelma actually spoke about it earlier. Rosa Parks was the secretary for the NAACP. And as Elder Thelma said, when she sat down, it wasn't just because she was tired. It was because in the words of Fannie Lou Hamer, she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And specifically thinking about a young 14 year old Emmett Till being murdered. In addition to that, we know that Reverend Al Sharpton called for another March on Washington this August 28th, which marks the death of Brother Emmett Till. We know that the first March on Washington, which was led by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, the NAACP was also a part of, was held on August the 28th as well. Emmett Till has really sparked the civil rights movement the Montgomery boy, bus boycott in so many more moments. It is very important because I believe that Mamie Till and Emmett Till's family has really taught us how to advocate and to make sure that our oppression is not done in isolation and in silence. We know Zora Neale Hurston said, if you are silent about your oppression, they will kill you and that you enjoyed it. And one of the things that Emmett Till family has taught us is that we cannot be silent that we must make our voices be whole. And the NAACP is still standing in solidarity. So thank you, Ms. Deborah Watts, for asking us to be a part of this moment. And happy birthday to Brother Emmett Till. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Leslie. Are we ready for my, Mina? Okay. Good day, everyone. I come to you in the spirit of the late Mrs. Mamie Till Mobley and the legacy of her son, Emmett Lewis Till. For I believe, if not for the murder of Emmett Lewis Till, there would be no Keith Beauchamp filmmaker today. And of course, without those who lost their lives throughout the civil rights struggle, we all would not have a path to follow. My journey with Emmett Till began when I was just 10 years old, growing up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I was in my parents' study, going through old magazines that they kept over the years. I reached in and I pulled out a Jet magazine that told the story of Emmett Lewis Till. On one side of the page, there's this angelic face of this young boy, sort of a mirror image of myself at that time. And on the other side of this page was this horrific face of this monster. I could never understand what truly happened to have someone murder a child in this way. So my parents saw me with this magazine in my hand and they walked over. And I recall my mother looking at my father and they both looked at me and they said it was time to tell me the story. Throughout my life, the name Emmett Till kept resurfacing. When I got into high school, I was interracially dating. And the first thing my parents would often tell me before I left the house at night was, don't let what happened to Emmett Till happen to you. So it became an educational tool to teach me about the racism that still exists in this country today. 
I would later find out, find out that the story of Emmett Till wasn't a story of my own, but it was sto a story that was told to many African-American males across, not just in this country, I should say across the globe, to keep us aware of our surroundings and also prepare us so that we could survive in a white dominant society. By now you're asking yourself, why is it so important to discuss the Emmett Till murder case? Well, terrorism hits home to all of us who are watching today. For hundreds of years, my ancestors have been terrorized and this act of terrorism existed far before September 11th. And unfortunately, as you can see, it continues on. You see, this case is important. It's important because we must never forget those who paved the way for us to exist in this free society. It's important, like Reverend Jesse Jackson would say, with no sense of history, we only exist in a vacuum. How can you respect boxer Mike Tyson while just understanding Joe Lewis? How can you respect gospel singer Yolanda Adams without knowing that she stands on the shoulders or like people such as Mahalia Jackson? I mean, how, how can you not understand why we must continue to tell Emmett's story? Why is it that we still live in a world where killing a man such as George Floyd, handcuffing him is not good enough that you want to kneel on his neck just to prove a point? Why do we still live in a country where strange fruit continues to hang from the trees of Magnolia, not just in, the, in this country, but abroad. You see, it's important that we know the truth surrounding Emmett Till's murder, for if we forget our past, history will repeat itself. In closing, I think of my great friend, confidant, the late Mrs. Mamie Till Mobile. I'm sorry, I'm a little emotional today because these days really get to me. It's 12 million. I recall million. her fighting for 47 years, trying to get justice done for her son. Until her last breath, she fought on. I recall conversations that we used to, ha we used to have and before I, I greet her good night, uh, we, we would say to each other, we would talk to each other the next day or so. She would leave me often with these words. She would say, Keith, you must continuously tell Emmett's story until man's consciousness is risen. Only then there would be justice for Emmett Till. Today, Thanks, Keith. on the day that we are now celebrating of course, we have to pause, the, pause for a moment of silence. Keith, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Keith? Yes. Yes, it, it's 12.01. Wow. This is Deborah. And I'm sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. But can you hold that final thought? Sure. Thank you. Thank you all. Please continue, Keith. Okay. So in closing, I would like to leave you with some words that the late Mrs. Mamie Till Mobley instilled in me. She used to tell me, Keith, you must continuously tell Emmett, Steel, Emmett Till's story until man's consciousness is risen. 
Only then there would be justice for Emmett Till. Today, I would like to rephrase that quote that she has given to me and like to say that we must all continue to tell Emmett Till's story until man's consciousness is risen. Only then there would be justice for Emmett Till. So to help on this quest to get justice for Emmett Lewis Till, please join us in signing a petition, a petition that you would see online um, that needs, that we need to continue to push, that will help us push, I should say, to get justice for Emmett Till. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. We are certainly at a pivotal moment. Thank you, Leslie. And thank you for illustrating how Emmett's legacy fits within everything happening in this current moment. As we look ahead to where we want to go from here and how to sustain this momentum into the future, we can learn a lot from Emmett's legacy about how to capitalize on opportunities to fulfill our charge for an equal future. Rounding out the conversation with the discussion is Marquise Hunt, Chairman Emeritus of the NAACP Youth and College Task Force and a student at Tougaloo College, which is located just a couple hours south of where Emmett was murdered. Welcome, Marquise. Thank you so much, Amberly, and thank you all for joining. Uh, and first of all, happy birthday to Emmett Till. Uh, one of the things that has always struck me um, as I travel and make my way um, to Mississippi is when I look over the Mississippi River, I often wonder how many black bodies are still inside of the river that have not been uh, found. Um, we recognize the efforts, um, somewhat of the efforts that we're working to try and find the body of Emmett Till. Um, and I also think about uh, me when I first attended to Wu College at 17 years old and was right there uh, where everything really happened and really smelling the air and seeing the people um, and recognizing that not only did the story that I read about Emmett Till uh, become even more real, um, but it was a different sense of feeling when I recognized that I too could have been Emmett Till. Um, and one of the things that it's so important now is that we recognize our responsibility to not only acknowledging the history in this country, but also recognizing our responsibility to continue to tell the story. And so as my uh, good friend and colleague Leslie said, uh, we thank Elder Thelma for being able to continue to tell the stories and we're able to listen to her voice um, so that we can preserve the history um, about what has happened to Emmett Till, but also make sure that folks around the country, around the world, recognize what white people in this country have been doing to us for far too long. Um, just like they uh, kidnapped Emmett Till from his uncle's home in Money, Mississippi was the same exact thing that they did to our ancestors on the shores of Africa while bringing them to the shores of uh, Virginia. And so one of the things that we definitely want to make sure that we're doing is educating folks about what happened, but also trying to figure out ways to really move towards that justice that we're looking for. Um, we often talk about no justice um, and no peace. We hear that saying often, um, and we are still in, two, in 2020 crying tears um, about the death of Emmett Till, um, someone who I never met, someone who, um, you know, whose mother I never had the experience of meeting, but yet uh, we still feel the pain um, when we look at the videos and we hear the stories of what happened to this 14-year-old boy who was literally mutilated, um, shot, uh, kidnapped and so many other things and then thrown into a river for people who really expected him not to be found after that um, is, is so horrendous. And I think that as young people, we need to continue to acknowledge the life and the legacy of Emmett Till, but also make sure that we're putting our best foot forward when it comes to fighting for justice for those from Emmett Till and before and for Emmett Till and after because we have not received justice uh, the justice system in America has failed us for it is designed for it, <laughs> what it was for, and it's working perfectly fine. But I think that it's really time for us to really move our best foot forward and make sure that we get the justice, not only for Emmett Till, but like others have echoed, Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, um, and so many other countless uh, Black 
and brown folks in this country who have been killed at the hands of the government um, and yet families are still crying because they have not been able to receive justice for their families. And so um, I thank you for inviting me and I thank you all for continuing to make sure that the legacy of Emmett Till is still being, um, you know, shared with people across, across the country and across the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marquis. Uh, man, these students and these young people are really moving the movement right now and that's what we need to see. Thank you so much. You give us so much pride and uh, really a hope for the future. So I wanna remind everybody that in your chat box, you can sign the petition that uh, Brother Keith was mentioning, okay? I want you to make sure you take that link and copy it and put it into your browser, go there right away and sign that petition. And I also want you to remember that you can donate. And the, there's a link right underneath the sign the petition link for you to donate. And that goes to the Mamie, the, oh, I'm sorry, the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation. <laughs> so thank you, Marquise. On the road to, the road to justice is long, but with it comes a better future for all of us. We have time for a couple of questions from the audience. So please use the chat function or Q, Q and A box to submit questions for our speakers and they'll be on standby waiting for you to put your questions in there. Amberly, we have the next portion, which would be the say our name. Okay, moving right along. Or, or just, <laughs> Do you know where we are? You, you're ready. You have it. Uh, one moment. I can I can help if you'd like. This is Deborah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm so you. glad we have you working now. We have your <laughs> your uh, you are working. We can hear you, Deborah. So please definitely jump in. Thank you so much. Yes. I'll tell you some things happen for a reason, but I have had tears for the, the last hour. So maybe that's why I was not able to connect with you all, video or audio. But I've enjoyed this and uh, such a great tribute to, to Emmett Till and such a moment at this. Um, well, in a few minutes, um, we're going to hear some of the other victims of racial violence. But first we're going to hear, well, actually we've already heard that beautiful music by the trio of Abigail Dixon, also of Zora Evangeline and uh, Samuel Igbo, 14 year old violinist who provided a processional. So if you could imagine as a family walks into a funeral, they process in a organized manner to pay respect to their loved ones. And so that's the music that they were playing at the time. So it's um, a joy to be able to welcome to the stage, Shauna Watley, who is the First Lady of Kingdom Fellowship and the Church, who's going to provide some reflections and the names of those loved ones that we need to always remember, who have lost their lives to hatred, racism, violence, and police brutality. Welcome, Shauna. Give us just a moment while the video is being queued. Thank you.
And as we wait, I just want to remind you to place your questions in the comment box so that we can select comment uh, questions to answer at a, at a later point in the conversation. As Shauna is coming forward uh, with her remarks, I'd like for you to remember those individuals, maybe in your family, in your community, that have been lost as well. These are stolen lives that often don't have the platform or the remembrance, such as what we're doing for Emmett and other families. But we always want to remember who they are and give honor to those families who have lost loved ones to racism, hatred, violence, and police brutality. Oscar Grant, Betty Jones, Trayvon Martin, Laquan McDonald, Dominique White, Eric Gardner, John Crawford III, Michael Brown, Izell Ford, Dante Parker, Michelle Cousseau, George Mann, Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gruley, Tamir Rice, Romaine Brisbane, Jermaine Reed, and any other names that you all would like to offer, please put those in the chat. Thank you. Well, that was beautifully done, Shauna. Um, there's too many legacies that have been forgotten or lost throughout history. And we thank you for helping us recognize and remember the people that we can. And wrapping up, um, our guest speakers today is Reverend Matthew Watley, who's the senior pastor at the Kingdom Fellowship AME Church. Because at this time, inspiration is in order. <laughs> we've had a celebration, but we know we've been brought to a place of remembrance, which sometimes is difficult. And so these words, I hope, will speak to your heart and your mind and give you some semblance of how you can move forward. Reverend Wesley. Yeah, but I believe that Layla is actually going to cue. Uh, Layla, are you cueing both of the videos uh, so we can see Lady Shauna's in its entirety, as well as Reverend Watley, you're on mute. We cannot hear you. Yes, give me two seconds and we both will be queued up and ready to go. I had um, Zoom. Phone. Wonderful, thank you. Refreshing the screen. And you're doing good. Sometimes you have uh, haters. And so, unfortunately, because we are doing and bringing such a powerful George message to the world, uh, unfortunately, George, George. sometimes we uh, have haters and evil. And we are going to continue, as Amberly said earlier, we are going to flush that out with love. Uh, and so, <laughs> give us just George one moment Floyd. to flush that out. Thank you so much, Lady. Ahmad Aubrey. Oscar Grant, Betty Jones, Trayvon Martin, Laquan McDonald, Dominique White, Eric Gardner, 
John Crawford III, Michael Brown, Izell Ford, Dante Parker, Michelle Cousseau, George Mann, Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gruley, Tamir Rice, Romaine Brisbon, Jermaine Reed, Matthew Ajabadi, Frank Smart, Natasha McKenna, Tony Robinson, Anthony Hill, Maya Hall, Philip White, Eric Harris, Walter Scott, William Chapman II, Alexia Christian, Brendan Glenn, Victor Manuel La Rosa, Jonathan Sanders, Freddie Gray, Joseph Mann, Salvador Ellswood, Sandra Bland, Albert Joseph Davis, Darius Stewart, Billy Ray Davis, Samuel Dubois, Michael Sabi, Brian Keith Day, Christian Taylor, Troy Robinson, Assam's Pharaoh Manley, Felice Kumi, Keith Harrison McLeod, Junior Prosper, Lamontez Jones, Patterson Brown, Dominique Hutchinson, Anthony Ashford, Alonzo Smith, Tyree Crawford, India Kager, Levante Biggs, Michael Lee Marshall, Jamar Clark, Richard Perkins, Nathaniel Harris Pickett, Benny Lee Tigner, Miguel Espinal, Michael Noel, Kevin Matthews, Betty Jones, Quintonio Legrier, Keith Childress Jr., Janet Wilson, Randy Nelson, Antroni Scott, Wendell Celestine, Prince Jones, David Joseph, Colin Rockamore, Deshaun Perkins, Christopher Davis, Marco Loud, Peter Gaines, Tori Robinson, Darius Robinson, Kevin Hicks, Mary Chuzillo, Demarcus Samir, Willie Tillman, Terrell Thomas, Sylvie Smith, Alton Sterling, Philandro Castile, Terrence Crutcher, Paul O'Neill, Altaria Woods, Jordan Edwards, Aaron Bailey, Ronell Foster, Stefan Clark, Antoine Rose II, Botham Jean, Pamela Turner, Dominique Clayton, Atiana Jefferson, Christopher Whitfield, Christopher McCorvey, Eric Reason, Michael Lorenzo Dean, Brianna Taylor. In Genesis 4, we see Cain violently take the life of his brother Abel. And the Bible says God then spoke to Cain. And the word says, God said to him, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And from that lesson, we learn that whenever it is an innocent life is taken, their blood speaks and God hears. 
and God himself moves to bring justice in that situation. Millennia later, we see the same thing happen when Emmett Till is tragically and senselessly murdered and his mother, Mamie Till, makes a faithful and courageous decision that the world should see what racism and violence has done to her child. And so she keeps the casket open so that the world might see his mangled body. And as his blood speaks, justice moves a step forward in this land. Fast forward decades later and see how the video of the murder of George Floyd sends shock waves around the world. And even as he loses his life, his blood speaks to mobilize a nation and a people to fight and assert our right of justice and freedom and the ability to exist. And so even as we celebrate the birthday of Emmett Till, we are reminded that while the arc of the moral universe is long, it does bend towards justice. And that God, the God of heaven and the God of earth does still hear and answer prayer. God does still hear the blood of the innocent and God moves on the behalf of his people, the least, the lost, the left out, the oppressed. And so while we continue to take our role and take our place in the struggle, I want to encourage you to know that our labor, our marching, our organizing, our voting, our protesting, our standing is not in vain because every time we stand, the blood speaks through us and God will hear us and bring healing in our land. Thank you for that inspirational message. As I said at the beginning today, today isn't just about celebration. It's also about justice, something we are still waiting for Emmett to receive. In this current system, those who yield power have chosen not to prosecute and hold perpetrators of racial violence accountable, adding insult to injury and reinforcing, reinforcing that this nation and its institutions think less of black lives than they do of white ones. There is an imbalance of justice. Every time there's not enough evidence, it sends a heart-wrenching message that the stolen lives of our loved ones and their lost hopes and dreams don't matter. We saw it when Trayvon Martin's murder was acquitted, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, Samir Rice's, and Freddie Gray's too. We've seen it the many times our people, like Sandra Bland, have died under questionable circumstances while in jail. We're seeing it right now in Louisville, where Breonna Taylor's killers are still roaming free. And 120, 123 days after her shooting, in her own home, and choosing not to call for immediate medical help. And the Till family has seen it too. 65 years later, and we are still waiting for justice for Emmett. His murderers confessed and were never brought to justice before their own death. A historian claims Emmett Till's accuser, Carolyn Bryant, admitted to lying about her interactions with Emmett and has never faced charges for her role in his death. Carolyn Bryant is still alive and has lived a full life in the shadows. But my cousin's blood is on her hands, and there is still time for justice, and we must act swiftly. This pivotal moment has created a momentum for social change that we haven't seen in a long time. We all have a role to play in creating the world we want to live in, and it starts with understanding what laws and policies are continuing to oppress us, and what new ones are being crafted in the name of justice and equity. Racist and anti-racist ideologies are the basis of which our U.S. Constitution 
and governing documents are built and continue to be built. Those ideals are held up by power and privilege. Thus, power lies in policy at the local, state, and federal level. The, to redistribute the power, we have to dismantle racist ideologies and transform policies. To do that, we must be advocates. Get to know your local elected officials, okay? Call their offices, send emails, tell them what your community needs. Demand accountability when they don't deliver and fail to right the inequities. Make your voice heard and encourage your families, your friends, and your neighbors to do the same because there is power in our voices and collective action. Just like in a choir where you can't sing with confidence if you don't know the words, we can't confidently call for, for justice unless we know exactly what we're calling for and who we need to call on. It's time to build our confidence for action together. And you can start by signing on the Emmett Till Family Foundation new hashtag justice for Emmett Till campaign, which you can join by texting Emmett to the number 243725. I want you to text Emmett, E-M-M-E-T-T, -T, to 243725. The campaign is working to apply pressure and demand that all investigations of civil rights era cold cases are exhaustive and that law enforcement thoroughly pursues all leads, both old and newly uncovered. It seeks to hold those responsible for are in, or, are, or are involved in murders accountable with the legal assistance of attorneys who explore criminal and civil options for the Till family that may also apply to other families. Those still alive need to be held accountable for their roles in the death of Emmett Till, as well as those who may have aided and abetted suspects during the course of this and these other crimes. And finally, the hashtag Justice for Emmett Till campaign advocates for local, state, and national politicians to pass the Emmett Till Victims of Racially Motivated Murder Act. VRMM Act, and is working to include other impacted families, civil rights organizations, advocates, and allies in this new legislative effort designed to empower victim families. The campaign has a big vision, and we need your help to achieve it. Deborah is going to share some ways we can get involved. Thank you, Amberly. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the beautiful job that you've done to move this program forward. And I hope everyone has enjoyed it. You know, it's a testament to the talent, the readiness, the commitment, and the passion that we all need to do some almost impossible things to move beyond some of the obstacles that are in our way. So, Amberly, you've shown that today, and the rest of the team has too. So I do truly appreciate it. And our performers have done a wonderful job, our speakers as well. And I know that everybody, I hope you've been engaged, and I'm, and I'm sure you have other questions too. But we're at the close. And we'd love for you to engage with us with Emmett Till Legacy Foundation. And as been said perfectly, please sign the petition. We're, we need to have justice now. We want you to save the date of August 27th through the 30th for the Emmett Lewis Till 65th anniversary commemoration. It's going to take place in Jackson, Mississippi and surrounding areas in the Delta. It will involve a youth summit. It will involve a full requiem, probably due to COVID on a virtual level. And um, movie screening, um, we hope to see perhaps even some of Keith's work <laughs> while we're there, along with a march, a peace and justice march, and then a Delta tour to the 
area where Emmett visited and where he was taken some 30 miles along his faithful journey. We'll see the courthouse, we'll see the store, the barn where Emmett was lynched and where they obtained the 75 pound cotton gin fans. And we'll do that social distancing along with our masks and other things. So please follow us on Facebook. We also have an event called the 65th Anniversary Commemoration event. And we are just pleased with how our country is standing up and moving forward and joining us in this justice journey. You will see celebrities today wearing a Justice for Emmett Till t-shirt. MSNBC, one of our influencers was on this morning wearing his shirt. And you will also have an opportunity to get a limited edition t-shirt still on the Eventbrite site. So I just wanna thank you so much for joining us, being with us on this justice trail and we appreciate your patience. I want you to be safe, be well, and please enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. I don't believe we have time for questions, do we? If you, up to you, Deborah. It's it's one thirty four. If you wanted to take uh, one moment and answer um, any questions, I can read you one or two of the questions. If you want, uh, one was about um, the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation and what you all do um, majority of the time as it relates to events. Um, programming. Uh, so if you wanted to just talk a little bit about um, the foundation and uh, the work that you all do, perhaps you can close with that. Okay, thank you. Great question. We are, well, we've established in 2005 to create this legacy of hope because of such a tragedy that Emmett experienced. We felt that we wanted to make sure we preserved his memory, create a different kind of a legacy around hope, and preserve the memory of his mother and the work that she had started to inspire our young people. So we have several programs, and you can find them on our website. One is the power of history, turning tragedy into triumph where we show a documentary called Who Killed Emmett Till. We have a discussion around that. We take that to churches, to corporations, to family homes, to um, assemblies in uh, colleges, universities around, around the country, and high schools as well. And we give people an opportunity to learn more about Emmett, the legacy, our work, those have been inspired by his demise, if you will, but also the rise of his, of his powerful legacy. Uh, so we talk about um, people like Keith Beauchamp and uh, so many others that are out there that are doing this incredible work regarding justice and remembering Emmett. And we have a chance to answer questions of the audience. And um, we also support a uh, college student effort with HBCU schools. Uh, there's a group called Progressive that uh, has an education ministry, and they send students from the north to the south to experience the HBCU schools. So we provide some scholarships there. And then we have um, a program called Justice in Time, and that is, I, I have an echo, you guys, so if I'm pausing, it's kind of strange, so I'm strange. Um, Justice in Time is 
a Know Your Rights training, and it is allowing an opportunity for our police department and our communities of youth and teens to engage together, to do some role reversal, to have them experience what each other is facing when they face each other in reality. And so it is about saving the lives of those teens and giving them an opportunity to operate in a way that gives them a better opportunity to save their own life when they encounter police. And we also do commemorations. Today is one of those where it's called uh, a time for unity in black and white. We ask the public to wear black and white for a, and have a moment of silence at 12 noon. And we do this in honor of the other victims, Emmett, we say their names, those lives that have been stolen based on racism, rape, hatred, police brutality, and violence. Um, check out our website for the rest of our um, events, and I may have missed some, and if any of our team is on the chat, please put those in the chat but we invite you to engage with us. We have an uphill battle, and that uphill battle is to get justice for Emmett Till. And we have pushed forward this petition, and right now we really need your help to help us demand justice. Our family has taken advantage of this opportunity to take this platform, step in front, move forward as Mamie would have us do. So that's Hopefully that answers one of the questions. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Deborah. I believe so. And so with that, um, you are welcome to thank your guest and we should close. It is now 140. Yes, yes. So sorry, we had a little bit of a hiccup there with our hackers uh, bombing our site, but that says something about the interest, doesn't it? And the power that we probably have to affect change. But I just want to thank all of our participants. Uh, we have Alani coming to us from Paris, actually. She's London born. We have others from the Twin Cities area, those that are on vacation that joined us, Omaha, Nebraska, to uh, Washington, D.C., uh, and other areas across the country, Florida, and other areas in Georgia as well. So I appreciate each and every one of the presenters, um, Keith Beauchamp, New York, Marquise from Virginia, Leslie, uh, Twin Cities, NAACP as well, who's helped to support us, and also this wonderful team of individuals that have been managing and maneuvering to help us all have a wonderful experience. Our team as well, the board of Intel Legacy Foundation, who's been on, have been commenting, also our friends of the board as well. We appreciate your support. And um, not to forget our ambassadors and our influencers, who you will be seeing wearing the Justice for Emmett Hill shirt. Uh, someone asked where the shirts are available, the limited edition shirts. You can find them. You can still order them on the Eventbrite site where you registered for this event. Well, with that, we thank everyone for joining us today, and we are going to close out the program. Everyone have a blessed afternoon. And thank you for joining us.